TJ Maxx is an American department store chain that opened in 1976. Good year. Thank you for your suggestion. This is you shopping. And this is you maximizing at TJ Maxx. You shopping. You maximizing. You shopping. You maximizing. Find the brands you love and get more you for your money every time. It's not shopping, it's maximizing. Start maximizing today. Max Life at TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx was founded in 1976 in Framingham, Massachusetts by Bernard Camarada and the Zare chain of discount department stores. The TJ Maxx concept was inspired in part by a recession. Bernard, or Ben, was hired by Zare Corp to capitalize on the potential for a chain offering off-price upscale apparel for the whole family. Zare had tried but failed to purchase Marshalls, so Zare hired Camarada, who had been Marshalls' head of merchandising, to create a rival chain. Within six years of the opening of the first TJ Maxx store, Zare had found yet another avenue to the off-priced fashion market. By the mid-1980s, off-priced specialty retailing was becoming more important to Zare Hit or Miss and TJ Maxx had brought in just 14% of the company's operating income in 1980, but by the first half of 1983, these operations were producing nearly 45% of their income. In 1984, Zare entered the membership warehouse club market, launching BJ's Wholesale Club and also acquiring Home Club Inc., a chain of home improvement stores. While neither of these ventures were immediately profitable, Hit or Miss and TJ Maxx continued to thrive. In 1986, profits of the Zare chain targeting low to middle income customers dropped, although TJ Maxx, Hit or Miss, and Chadwick's of Boston targeting mid to higher income customers continued to grow. That same year, Zara Corporation opened 35 more TJ Maxx stores and 31 new hit or miss stores. In fact, Zara's Corp off-price retailing chains were so successful that by 1987, Zara thought it prudent to organize them under one name and grant them autonomy from the decreasingly prosperous parent company. In June of 1987, just 10 years after its flagship chain TJ Maxx opened its first store, the TJX Companies Inc. was established as a subsidiary of Zare. It sold 9.3 million shares of common stocks in its initial public offering. Zare owned 83% of the subsidiary. During this time, Zare was facing several challenges. In the first half of 1988, Zare had operating losses of $69 million on sales of $1.4 billion. Observers blamed technological inferiority, poor maintenance, inappropriate pricing, and inventory pileups, and speculated that Zare was ripe for a takeover. And despite all of this, subsidiary TJX companies continue to yield a profit. In October of 1988, the company decided to focus on TJX. It sold the entire chain of over 400 Zare stores to Ames department stores. In exchange, the company received $431 million in cash, a receivable note, at what was then valued at $140 million of Ames cumulative senior convertible preferred stock. If you want to know more about the history of Ames or Zares, check out my other two videos after you watch this, of course. The company continued to hone in on its profitable new core business, selling unrelated operations such as BJ's and Home Club. The same month, the company acquired an outstanding minority interest in TJX. On the day it acquired the minority interest, the company merged with TJX. Later that month, the company changed its name from Zare Corp to the TJX Companies Inc. 
By 1991, TJ Maxx had 437 stores in 46 states. It planned to open many more stores, focusing primarily on the only scantily penetrated southwestern United States, as well as expanding several existing stores. The purchase of Marshalls from the Melville Corporation brought TJX a prize to complement TJ Maxx. The prior Marshall ownership had strayed from off-price strategies, so TJX refocused the business. It emphasized non-promotional marketing, quality brand names at low prices, and timely markdowns to draw customers back and strongly. In the fall of 1998, TJ Maxx opened the store chain AJ Wright. This chain would later close in January of 2007. In 2007, the company disclosed a computer security breach dating back to 2005. Computer hackers had gained access to information on credit card and debit card accounts for transactions since January of 2003. This exposed more than 100 million customers to potential theft from their accounts. The company would lose money in later years, and several hackers were arrested and charged. In March of 2009, TJX launched an e-commerce site. At first only selling handbags, the range of items was later expanded to include clothing, shoes, jewelry, other accessories, and some home goods. Business Insider described TJ Maxx as Macy's worst nightmare in an oft-quoted 2016 article by Mallory Schlossberg. The article reported on how TJ Maxx's soaring sales should be concerning for ailing department stores that are fighting to get people to pay full price. As off-price retailers become an increasing threat to traditional department stores, signaling a change in consumer buying habits, TJ Maxx's revenue grew to surpass that of Macy's. According to The Economist, the overheads at TJX and Ross are, as a percentage of sales, about half of those of Macy's or Nordstrom. Fortune stated that the quicker inventory turn and the sense that an item on a rack might not be there the following week at a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls has led to a boom in this area of retail and made such stores a rarity in the business. Shoppers are coming to the stores. Today, there are over 1,200 locations throughout the United States. So what are some of your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.